The pastoral ministry classes that Fruitland Baptist Bible College offers are intended to be practical. This will certainly be true in this presentation. Hello, this is Steve Googe welcoming you to another Pastoral Ministry 401 lesson. Today we will talk about the use of scripture and prayer in caring conversations. You will learn how to avoid the inappropriate use of scriptures. You will also learn some guidelines for using scripture in pastoral ministry, and then you will learn some guidelines for using prayer in an appropriate way. Now, let's get started. Now, let's look at some inappropriate uses of scripture. We need to be careful that we don't take scripture out of context. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 29, the Bible says, and if your right eye makes you stumble, tear it out and throw it from you. For it is better for you that one of the parts of your body perish than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. This verse of scripture might be used to encourage a person to mutilate their body if that body part became sinful. But that's not the point that Jesus is teaching at all. As a matter of fact, what Jesus is saying here is that sin is absolutely destructive and that we need to do any means necessary to deal with it, but cutting off a finger or a hand or gouging out an eye certainly would not prevent us from sinning. As a matter of fact, what we would have to do to stop sinning altogether would be to lop off our heads. Because you see, sin is pervasive in all of our lives. So, Scripture does not encourage people to uh, cut off body parts. And we need to be sure that we don't encourage people to take the Bible literally where it is not intended to be taken literally. That would be using Scripture in an abusive way and out of context. And then there's the quick answer. The quick answer would indicate that someone has asked you a question and you don't know the answer or you don't know the solution. And so you just throw a Scripture passage in quickly. We're going to answer a question someone has or a problem that they have dealing with uh, an issue in their life, and we just give a quick response by throwing out a scripture that doesn't even fit the situation. Then the third inappropriate way of using scripture is looking at scripture as if it's magic. We do not use prayer as if it's magic, and we don't use scripture as if it is magic. We can't use a prayer as if it were some Shinto prayer to achieve what we want or to receive what we would like to have. Prayer is not magic. It, communica it is communicating with God. Neither is it appropriate to use scripture in an insensitive way. Let me give you an example. Romans 8.28 is a favorite passage scripture for all of us, but it would not be appropriate in certain situations. For example, if you were visiting a, a, two parents where an infant had passed away, this passage is true, but it would be insensitive to use it in that circumstance. Romans 8.28 says this, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to His purpose. We need to be very careful how we use Scripture. It would be appropriate later for us to return to those parents, maybe some weeks or months later, and share this passage of Scripture with them to help them as they dealt with the issue. But before parents bury their child, and before they've had some opportunity to cope with their loss, then it would not be a message that they would receive from God's Word very easily. This passage is a true passage of Scripture. It's truth without any mixture of error, but it would be insensitive to use it in that context. Now, here are some guidelines for the proper use of Scripture in pastoral ministry. These guidelines could help you use Scripture in a proper way. Guidelines for the proper use of Scripture in pastoral ministry will discover the family's familiarity with the Bible and what sense of strength 
do they derive from the scriptures? Do they openly talk about the Bible? Is the Bible visible in their room, if you're in a hospital setting, or their home? Do they have a number of Bibles? Has the person indicated that they identify with certain biblical characters and they gain strength for their own spiritual problems from the Bible? For example, you might use David. David was a person who committed adultery. And maybe you're dealing with an individual who has that sort of sin in their background. Use a passage of scripture that would then help them to identify with the character. Or maybe they're going through suffering. You could point them to the book of Job. On this slide, we find the continuation of our guidelines for the proper use of Scripture in pastoral ministry. C says, let the Scripture do the comforting. God's Word will provide comfort for the individual. We just need to let God speak. We don't have to give a running commentary or a sermon or a sermonette. Just let the Scripture do the comforting. And then, I encourage you to commit some scripture passages to memory. These passages will deal with such struggles that an individual goes through that they can't get through on their own. For example, forgiveness and guilt. They're both covered in 1 John 1, 9. The scripture says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If the need is for hope in the midst of despair, you could point the person to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast, and one which enters within the veil. This passage tells us that we do have hope and that our hope is in Jesus. If an individual needs to have comfort, Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 31, is a great passage to turn to. It's a passage that says this, Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. And then there is the need for uh, self-acceptance. Some people have that need because they really have not been able to learn to accept themselves and who they are. And for that, you can turn to John's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 9 through 11. The scripture says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. What a great passage of Scripture. And again, commit some of these to memory and use them as you have opportunity in ministering to individuals. On the previous slide, we talked about forgiveness in the midst of our guilt and how 1 John 1, 9 helps us with that very issue. And then another of life's big struggles is answered for us as we look at Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. And that allows a person to have hope because we're uh, able to deal with the despair that comes because we know that the Lord is our anchor. And then we can also experience the proper kind of positive self-acceptance. We learned that in John's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 9 to 11. And now we come to a fellowship with, uh, with uh, when we're lonely, fellowship when we're lonely. And that passage of Scripture is addressed in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. And do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Fellowship in the community of faith helps deal with this idea of loneliness. We're not to isolate ourselves and become lonely, but we're to 
be with other people, particularly God's people, in God's house, in his church. And then support for those who struggle with unacceptable impulses. A passage of scripture I hope you will keep in mind is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says, No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will provide the way of escape also that you may be able to endure. The passages that we have examined will help in life's struggles, and we all face struggles. Those people you minister with, then too, will have their struggles as well. Many people struggle with the issues that we have listed here and many, many more. But if you will commit some of these scripture passages to memory, you'll be able to help many people as they walk through very difficult circumstances. Now let's turn our attention to some guidelines for prayer. Some guidelines to prayer help us to know how to focus on the needs of the folks that we're ministering to. I would encourage you to pay attention to the nature of the conversation, and you will know when it's appropriate to have prayer with the person. You will understand that prayer is acceptable when the person talks openly about prayer. You'll have no question. It will be a no-brainer to be able to have prayer with that sort of individual. Pay attention to the immediate environment that you're in. When a medical person is present or in a hurry to get the patient on a gurney toward the operating room, give that medical person the right of way. It may not be the best time to stop them and have a lengthy prayer. Reassure the patient on their way to surgery that you're praying for them, but don't interrupt the medical staff. And then when a person is anxious or afraid, it's always comforting when an individual puts a hand on the shoulder and offers a prayer of comfort for a worried person or a nervous person. On this slide, we continue our discussion on when to pray. Pray when you have information from others who have shared it with you, and that will help guide you in terms of meeting the needs of that patient. Pray for them, especially when the Holy Spirit prompts you to pray for them. Certainly, pray for that individual when the body language of those folks that you're ministering to indicates that they're open to prayer. Pray for other people in the room. Try to remember their names. Try to understand the relationship they have with the patient or the person who you're visiting. But try to get the names of every individual in the room. And in your prayer, specifically mention that name before the Lord. If you are unsure, just ask them for permission to pray. It's always appropriate to do that. Just say, would it be okay if I lead us in a time of prayer? I once had a gentleman that, that uh, told me when I offered to pray for him, uh, he, he said, well, that's okay if, if you need to pray and if it'll help you, that'll be just fine. I went ahead and prayed for him. And then on this slide, we focus on how to pray. Focus the prayer. Generalizations are irrelevant, and they're me meaningless to the patient. They're also counterproductive. So focus your prayer on the specific need of the individual. Often I will ask the person, is there something on your heart you'd like for us to pray about today? And when they tell me an issue, then I pray. Sometimes they will say, no, there's nothing that's particularly pressing today. Well, you accept that as well, and you just pray. Then second, make the prayer personal. Mention the person's name. Be involved in praying about items that you've talked about with this individual already in your conversation. And then be brief. 
be concise and to the point. This is not the place to pray for every missionary that you know around the world. Keep the prayer on point. Make it concise and brief. And it's also okay to quote scripture in your prayers. As a matter of fact, it's a wonderful way to communicate to the Lord. When you pray using scripture, you always pray the will of God. In the prayer, summarize the deeper points of the previous conversation that you've had with the individual. And be sure to include any requests that they have specifically asked you to pray about. Well, this ends this lesson on using scripture and prayer in a caring conversation. My prayer for you is that you will develop a easy way to communicate with people that leads to the use of scripture and prayer in a caring conversation. God bless you as you use prayer and scripture to help others.